In the beginning, there was nothing. THEN I SHOWED UP! <laughs> what is up you guys, this is DMB Universe here and ready to kick off my brand new series on my channel. Now as you can obviously see, this is a completely different format than any other video I've done these past few years. You see, with MLP Generation 4 coming to a close very soon, and no real word as to when Generation 5 is supposed to be kicking, uh, kicking off, I wanted to make sure I had something MLP related to do on my channel besides reacting to fan-made works and the such. Plus I just wanted to branch out from doing reactions, but stick close to what got me to a bunch of subscribers to begin with. I'm calling this series, The Ultimate Analysis on Insert Character Here. And as you can see by the title, I'm going to be starting off with everyone's favorite book course, Twilight Sparkle. The point of the series is to overanalyze things that the character has done throughout the series, noting down their development and seeing if they stay consistent in their character. As a story writer who values characters very highly, I want to show just how much detail goes into making these characters and what makes it feel so real when you put them on the screen. Now the reason I'm starting with Twilight is because she'll be the character that will take the most amount of time to get to, considering that she is the quote unquote main main character out of the bunch. And since I'm going to go through every episode she's the main focus in, yes, I mean every episode from Season 1 all the way up to the eventual Season 9, I think it's better to tackle the hardest person to analyze first. Now, I'm going to be looking at things at both a subjective and an objective lens. I encourage any of you watching to leave a comment on anything I happen to misinterpret or just outright give false feedback on. I'll screen cap it and make it a backup notice come next episode. Because while this is going to be a frame by frame analysis and whatnot, I do have room for error and would like to encourage participation in some way from my audience. So without further ado, let's get started with the first episode. Oh and by the way, I'll do my best to talk like an outsider looking in, and not mention any like future episodes unless truly necessary. Character Introduction We see Starbutt reading a book. Pay attention, because this is going to be what we in the writing business like to call a character consistency. About a procrustious past with Celestia and Luna. But we don't know that yet. This immediately shows us that she's interested in knowledge and intrigued with the unknown. Huh, which look at that, not even a full minute in, we already have a bunch of interesting things about our main character. After that, we transition to her trying to learn more about what she just read until she stopped by, uh, um, uh, okay, hold on. <clears throat> Lemon Hearts. Twinkle Shine and Minute Tea. Uh, yep. Pretty sure these are gonna be memorable characters. Anyway, they tell us that Moondancer is having a get together and asks Twilight to join. She comes up with an excuse and leaves. Okay, so at this point with her character, we don't know exactly what her relationships are with the other ponies. So this scene shows us that these three ponies know how much of a shut in that she can be and will go out of their way to at least try to find her and invite her to a get together. Meaning she is a bad person, but someone that just looks like they need to get out more. This scene also is meant to show us that when Twilight is interested in something knowledge related, her priorities are almost always to find out more. And as Twinkle Shine says, She's more interested in books than friends. Don't really need to be spelled out like that, but hey, it's a kid show. They emphasize more about her wanting to learn more about what she just read by passing up other ponies on the way. They try to wave at her, but unless someone actually physically stops her like the first three, she's not planning on stopping anytime soon. Side note 1. She seems to be somewhat well known around her area since there are ponies around just trying to dress her away. Already showcasing how long she's been here and maybe even hinting at her status as a student of the princess. Twilight reaches what I guess is her home. Since Spike is already there and it would be kind of odd for him to just be standing around in some library with a present. If we analyze her room we see, drumroll please, BOOKS! Really hammering in the book loving aspect to her character I see. Right off the bat. Nice. I like it though. This really showcases everything about her character in the mere 5 minute mark of the entire show. Side note 2. Spike already has a gift ready for Moondancer. This could imply that Spike and Twilight once went to a party and never did again, because you know, Twilight. Or Spike always tries to be the one to be friendly but inevitably gets shut down by Twilight. I'll go with the latter because her next line to Spike is... Oh Spike, you know we don't have time for that sort of thing. Here we see that she views friendly outings and social gatherings as nothing more than inconveniences to what she finds really important. Ha, <laughs> and here we're introduced to her first ability, Levitation. So far we see her lift 19 books, which would be around 120 to 135 pounds. Why am I mentioning this? While I go over the growth of her character, I also want to analyze the growth of her abilities with magic. You know, well, considering that her element is magic after all. 
If I include Spike, she would be lifting around 175 pounds or a good roundup estimate of 200. Which, in my case, is very impressive for a first demonstration of how gifted she is in magic. Have you ever tried lifting 19 textbooks on a baby dragon when you're going to high school? Yeah, didn't think so. After finding more about the elements and the mayor and the moon, we get to what's going to be the staple to Twilight's character throughout the rest of this season. And that is the Dear Princess Celestia Letters. We also find out through Twilight that she is a student of the princess at this point. This helps us understand why Twilight is the way she is. Being the student to someone so important would put a lot on a person. Making us see Twilight is trying to be the best student she can be and even means sacrificing her social life. What I really like about this scene is that it already shows us just how smart Twilight is with her use of big words like pre precipice and imperative. I asked my 7 and 10 year old nieces what they thought the word meant and they didn't have a clue. As I'm aware, two kids can't speak for the millions of others that watch this show, but I'm going to be using their experience as a springboard to some of the points, like how this show showcases that Twilight, and any other character I happen to do, goes beyond kid show level of writing. Showing Twilight saying many different words with the same meaning and having Spike be clueless puts a stamp on the intellect level that she has in this series. And it also readies us for upcoming scenes that her, the comedic moments with Twilight are going to stem from the fact that she's usually the smartest person in the room. After sending the letters, we see that Twilight's confidence stems from how sure she is on something. The more she understands, the more confident she is. This also shows a hint to us that she fears the unknown almost as much as she's interested in it. We transition yet again to her making her way to Ponyville with Spike. Throughout the journey there, we see her be visibly upset about what's going on, and groan at the fact that Celestia wants her to go to this unknown place and make friends. Something they previously established has never been found used for. Whoa, wait, whoa, wait, is, is there, is there a character arc coming? Starting things off as soon as Spike brings up the fact that she'll be staying at a library, she looks at the preparation and making friends side of things as a hurdle to what she really wants to do. That being more knowledge of the situation at hand and being right about the upcoming danger. This to me is also interesting. Twilight shows that even though her princess and her teacher said nothing is wrong, she would still believe she's right. Meaning Twilight in some way doesn't even listen to Celestia when she's in full bookworm mode. But she is still loyal to her words of checking the preparations, even though she could have just booked it over to the library despite knowing dangers could be coming afoot. Now we have the montage of her being introduced to the rest of the cast. I'll try to make things short because this is supposed to be only Twilight's development and not so much the others, so I'm just gonna go off mainline first impressions as a means to cut things short. Because mainly the entire scenes with every one of them can be boiled down to her development of trying her best to make things quick and dodging friendship, but gets annoyed because ultimately their personalities are making her experience friendship anyway. Going down the line, Pinkie Pie, Strange, Applejack, Very Forward, Rainbow Dash, Surprising, Rarity, Aggressively Generous, and Fluttershy, Selectively Shy. Side note 3, when Twilight gets annoyed, she tends to be rather aggressive with both tone and action, as shown when she bucks Spike off and just runs with the excuse that he's tired. Now we get to the scene where Pinkie organized a party for Twilight that she tries to ignore while mistakenly drinking hot sauce. All I can say here is that Twilight can be very absent-minded when she's faced with things that she is disinterested in, or when she's too focused on one thing and not paying attention to any other thing that she deems unuseful. After all is said and done, we get Twilight's introduction to Nightmare Moon and how she handles the situation. But Twilight steps up with that confidence she has due to being aware of the situation, tying back to the whole confidence comes with knowledge thing that I said before. Now that we reach the moment where Twilight puts Spike to bed, I want to talk a little bit about her muddly nature that she showcases towards Spike in the show, and how it showcases in many different episodes moving forward. Twilight, despite seeing how things she's read is 100% fact at this point, the princess is missing, and now it's going to be probably Eternal Night forever, still takes the time to put Spike in his bed, tuck him in, and say he is still a baby dragon, showing her care for this character in a motherly way. Then she immediately goes into full panic slash desperation mode to find a book that would help. It's small slash big to see the hierarchy of Twilight's priorities, and being a caring figure to Spike is near the top of her list on this one. Moving on, Twilight basically gets jumped by Rainbow Dash and the other five come around to know what's going on. She physically shows that she's still not sure how to approach this group due to her antisocial nature at this time. I like to point out that she steps back a bit once they all start to casually walk closer to her. Small things like this makes me like this show more and more. Twilight then breaks down the knowledge she knows about Nightmare Moon and what it would take to stop her. To me, her closing her eyes while she explains shows me she's only telling them this just so she can get her off her back, and not so much of hoping that they will help in the matter. This later gets emphasized once they get to the Every Forest, and she tries to distance herself from her imme uh, them immediately. Side note 4. 
Another small yet appreciable thing the animators did was as soon as after that said friend, Twilight mouths the word friend with a face of confusion, still showcasing just how much she just doesn't understand what they're, why they're doing what they're doing. After dealing with the fact that she's now stuck with these weirdos, we move forward through the Everfree Forest. Since these scenes were meant for the development of the other five, there isn't really much to say other than Twilight slowly starts to see what friendship is all about through their actions. So we're just gonna skip over to the part where she has now come to face to face with Nightmare Moon. As soon as she sees the elements start to spin and go away into this darkness tornado, she doesn't hesitate to jump in after them. When coming to, she's confronted with this imposing figure, complete with lightning and everything. But instead of cowering, she gets the bright idea of rushing her head on. Something Nightmare Moon even states that is kind of like the dumbest idea she could think of. You're kidding. You're kidding, right? Now, my friend narrator 007 told me that it's wise to think that Nightmare Moon was pretty weak after coming back from the moon. So, she probably couldn't do, like, gigantic horn beams like she showcases in a later episode down the line. But, here's the thing that I have to say about that, Twilight does not know that. And if she did, it's still a very heavy gamble that she took just by rushing her like that. And this game of chicken is why I really enjoy this character. And now we see her signature ability, teleportation. I say signature because she uses this move almost all the time and her first use of it is actually expertly planned. She was hoping for Nightmare Moon to take her game of chicken bait so she would be away from the elements so she could be able to teleport to them and give them the spark. I like this. It tells us Twilight is not only book smart but also a strategist. Or well, was dumb luck. I'd like to go with the former. Side note 5. After she teleports, she shows to be a little woozy and even holds her head, showing this move is more of a hassle to use than simply levitating things. Okay, so teleporting seems to be a higher form of magic for unicorns to use. I guess we won't be seeing her use it over and over repeatedly since it apparently takes a lot out of her just from going a few feet alone. Not to mention the concentration it looked like it needed. PUT THAT AWAY, I'LL EXPLAIN SLASH DEFEND THAT LATER! Let's get the second episode done first, shall we? After the supposed spark didn't work, Nightmare Moon destroys the element and Twilight nearly seems to think all is lost. Until she hears the voices of the others. She comes to the realization that those weirdos aren't actually weirdos, but her friends. And now her character arc has met its conclusion. After coming to the understanding that Kingdom Hearts is light, I mean, uh, friendship is magic, she gains the elements of harmony and defeats Nightmare Moon with a great taste of skills. Alright, that's the first season opener of MLP. Wow, this is going to be a long series. And I'm doing this for all the characters. Yep, this is going to take the rest of my life, I bet. <laughs> anyway, the best way to end things off in this episode is to keep track of all the lessons that Twilight learns throughout the way. So in this two-parter, she learns friendship is magic! Why did I get the feeling I'm going to be saying that a lot? I'm going to be saying that a lot.